Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. This is episode number 24.2. It's rare that we get to a point one, let alone a point two. Point two means that we had a regular episode, number 24 in this case, and we already had one supplemental episode that expands upon it, and now we're doing it again, hence the point two as opposed to point one, which was the previous expansion. Back in episode number 24, we took a look at the Ewok telemovies on home video, and we took a look at three products at the time. We had the original VHS release of the Ewok Adventure, a.k.a. Caravan of Courage, on VHS from 1990. We followed that up by also looking at the sequel, Battle for Endor, also released on VHS in 1990. And we took a look at how in 2004, there was that Star Wars Ewoks Adventures, or Ewok Adventures, excuse me, singular, Caravan of Courage, Battle for Endor, double feature that was released alongside the double feature animated uh, adventures for droids and Ewoks, and alongside when they finally released the original trilogy on DVD for the first time. So you have a DVD double feature that includes both from 2004, VHS releases in 1990 of each individual telemovie. Then in episode number 24.1, we took a look at the Laserdisc, the American Laserdisc. We had Ewok Adventure, and we had Battle for Endor. Again, releases from 1990. Oh, they actually added a couple more copies of this special into my home video library. Wanted to showcase them here. These are Japanese Laserdisc releases of the Ewok telemovies. We start with an Ewok adventure, Caravan of Courage. Of course, we have our Obi here on the side. I'm going to go ahead and take the Obi off first, and we'll take a look at that. So we have CBS Fox Video at the top, Laserdisc, lots of text in Japanese. Down at the bottom says Stereo. More information does say it's 95 minutes long. does note that it is CLV. Then we've got the laser vision symbol and product number on the back. CBS Fox video again. Lots of Japanese text, but we have advertisements for Cocoon, Return of the Jedi, and The Empire Strikes Back on Laserdisc. Then, of course, we have the actual regular packaging. We have CBS Fox video up in the corner. Bottom corner has a Laserdisc logo or a Laser Vision logo. Notice there are no English version of the title on the cover at all. And it's got one of these uh, movie poster images used here as a cover. Uh, one of the movie posters used outside the U.S. more extensively. So cool alternate artwork, which is part of what drew me to these, especially for Battle for Endor, but we'll look at that in a second. Then on the back, Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure. Then your uh, cast information, crew information there, CBS Fox again, images from it. Japanese text here, including... The uh, chapter listings, it looks like. So no chapter listing in English, unfortunately, there. We have our information, of course, down at the bottom, most of which is in Japanese. Most notable to me, I think, is the date on this. So Caravan of Courage. I say, okay, uh, Caravan of Courage. Well, that was 1984. Okay. And the American VHS and Laserdisc releases, those were 1990. So this must be like probably around 1990, right? Mm -mm. 1986. So four years before the United States got any kind of home video release of either of the Ewok telemovies, here it is on Laserdisc in Japan. Inside, along with the disc, you got a little info sheet here, but again, it's all Japanese, no way for me to read it at this point, but has artwork there that is similar to the American home video release artwork. You have the disc with... Similar labels to what we've seen on some other Japanese Laserdiscs, but notice here that, again, the title is only in Japanese. So if this gets mixed up in your collection, good freaking luck telling what it is unless you're matching Japanese uh, letter design against the other material, because unless you speak Japanese, this is essentially a design that you're looking at, not letters that you can read. And inside, I found a little insert that seems to be... I don't know, maybe it's like warranty information. Maybe it's like one of those, here's some other stuff we're offering. I have no idea what it is. You might say, well, why wasn't that thrown away by the original owner if you just acquired these on eBay or something? The copy that I received 
of Caravan of Courage, when it got to my mailbox, was still factory sealed. I opened it so that I could show you the contents and so we could check them out and compare them here on the show. So, you know, kind of a big deal. It's the first time that's really happened outside of something brand new for me to actually get something entirely sealed and open it for this venue and all. But that's Caravan of Courage. Slightly cooler looking, but not amazingly so, right? Then we have, though, the battle for Indoor, which is the one that looks really cool to me and helps spark this purchase. That is this. Is that not a friggin' awesome cover there? It makes it seem way more dramatic and more like, you know, traditional Star Wars than the actual Battle for Indoor film is, but I look at this and I think, hmm, they're being tracked by a witch and there's the weird guy in the background there, but it seems more kind of a nice cozy adventure with the fire and everything there. I see this, I immediately think of him with a Give me the power! Kind of thing. So, certainly plays up the uh, the enemy angle here. I dig it. Oddly enough, though, there is no Charl on this cover. Charl, of course, being the character eventually retconned into being a Night Sister, whereas she is more prominent on this cover than the leader of the Marauders. And you know, while we are talking about who's on the cover and their prominence, it makes sense for the Sanyasin guy, right, Tarak, to be up here. He is the big villain, even though it's odd that Charles not on there at all. Fine. But look at our heroes. Sindel's there holding a knife. Wicket's there with a growling face. We have Teak. But then between Wicket and Teak, we have Alex Rogan from the last Starfighter, maybe? Uh, a hybrid of Han and Luke, maybe. I'm assuming that is supposed to be Mace Tuwani, Sindel's older brother. But he's not the big warrior of the peace. He dies at the beginning of the freaking movie. Spoiler warning. I don't know. Maybe this is supposed to be some idealized version of Noah. You know, Wilford Brimley has slimmed down, become clean-shaven, and become sort of an action hero when we weren't looking. It's bizarre. And yet this is a promotional poster used in places like Europe that was then used for this cover. Kind of a neat little thing here, and in this case, we do have some English. We have an Obi. This Obi a little bit different, rather than just sliding on and opening up. This one slides on more like a ribbon. Just pop this off here and look at the Obi. No American English, or any English, until you hit the title there, and then we got Teak. And the Laser Vision logo and NTSC down at the bottom. Flip it over. MGM USA. Similar, similar. This is the front, by the way. Sindel. And then it tells us down at the bottom. Uh, Dolby Surround Stereo and has the Laser Vision logo again. So a different style of Obi than what we've seen with any of the other releases that we've taken a look at from Japan yet. Otherwise, we've got MGM USA up there, or excuse me, I keep saying USA, MGM UA, there you go, up there at the top. We have Stereo Extended Play CLB, George Lucas, I'm not sure how much he'd want to be associated with it now, but okay, George Lucas, Ewoks, The Battle for Endor, so much more dramatic, right, in how it's presented there, we flip it around. George Lucas, Ewoks, The Battle for Endor, and then our, you know, cast information and whatnot. Image of Teak, images from the telemovie, Japanese text there going down, presumably giving us the chapter stops and whatnot. Japanese, 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 for the most part, as we get down to the bottom there as well. Inside, we again have one of those inserts. This one gives us Ewoks, The Battle for Endor in English. Side one, side two, and chapter in English, but then the actual chapter names and whatnot all in Japanese, along with the text down at the bottom. Flip it around. It gives us credits and cast and whatnot information for it in English, but no chapter listings there either. If you're wondering, by the way, why I didn't show you the back of the insert for Caravan of Courage, it's because the back of it was blank. We then have our disc in its protective layer here. 
Different looking because this is an MGM UA release rather than CBS Fox. Got your logo up there, title at the bottom, laser vision off to the side, which side it is. And it does note again that it is NTSC, which is the same thing that will play in the United States as opposed to POW. Interestingly, again, from a chronological perspective, when was this released? Well, it aired in 85, uh, bearing in mind, of course, though, that I guess it must not have aired in Japan until 86, because for whatever reason, this gives a 1986 copyright date for the actual telemovie. But the copyright date on this package, on this release, 1988. So, a couple years after CBS Fox released Caravan of Courage, but still two years before we got what we think of as the mainstream releases in the United States on VHS and Laserdisc of the same thing. Again, those different timings of releases give us a little bit of perspective, I hope, given how much we complain these days about how long we have to wait for a movie to hit Blu-ray after it's been in theaters, which these days is a matter of less than a year, or how much we complain about things like when The Force Awakens first came out, America got it, then the UK got it later, and there was a, about a week or two gap in between, and now we're seeing the opposite for The Force Awakens 3D Collector's Edition that's coming out, where the UK gets it first, and then a couple weeks later, the US gets it. A couple of weeks? Not nearly as bad as a matter of years. Just a couple new cool things I thought I'd add to the collection here. I love the cover of Battle for Indoor, even if it is a little more grandiose than one might expect. But I wanted to share them and thought you might find it interesting. Hopefully you did. With that, we'll wrap this episode. Thank you for watching. May the Force be with the home video viewers.